Welcome to Salisbury University on the Air, a program highlighting the activities and the people of the campus. My name is Susan Purnell. As high school students reach the pivotal point in their educational career and begin thinking about the next step, college often is the logical progression. But how to determine which schools to apply to and how to go about that is sometimes a challenge. College choices are not only about those fresh out of high school, but also non-traditional students who want to finish a degree or perhaps transfer students from either four or two year institutions. Here to tell us how Salisbury University can be a good fit for students on any number of paths are Beth Skogeland, Director of Admissions, and Charles Overholt, Assistant Director of Freshman Admissions. First is Beth. Welcome Beth. Thank you. And very good to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Yes. <laughs> so you've been the Director of Admissions since 2012, is that right? Yes, that's correct. Golly, and so what drew you to, to SU? I really was doing a nationwide search and I just fell in love with the campus. I thought it was a very friendly campus and that's the feedback that we get when people go on tours. They love the campus, they love how friendly the people are, students are walking around with their Salisbury swag on um, and I just really fell in love with it. And you have two children that I think go to SU or at least have gone to SU, is that right? Yes, that's correct. How I have. was that for you? It, it's been great. They, I don't see them unless they need money, uh -huh. typically. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's the parent, children. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But they um, have both done very well. They both are really strong athletes. Uh, mm -hmm. My son kicked for the football team, so he finished his four years of football, but he has one more year. So he's graduating in May with a marketing degree in the professional sales minor. Uh -huh. And my daughter is a junior. She's on the lacrosse team, and she's an exercise science major. And she uh, will be graduating um, in two years. And then my husband it actually is the assistant women's soccer coach. So it's a family affair. We're all at oh, SU. Oh, you are. Mm -hmm. Gosh, you're bleeding <laughs> maroon, maroon and gold. We are. We That's are. That's wonderful. Yeah. Now, for them, I mean, was it always obvious to them that they wanted to go here? Or how was that their search? Um, for Trevor, he, he really was interested in SU and uh, didn't, we lived in Easton at the time, so it was still far away mm -hmm. from home for him, an hour away, so he thought that was great. Mm -hmm. uh, Emma did not want to come to SU because I was here, her brother was here, uh, but she did a, a search for lacrosse. She was a really talented lacrosse player, and she just really decided, you know, she liked lacrosse at Salisbury. She wanted to make an impact right away, and she's done that, so she, you know, was just really excited. I mean, that's... You know, you can't beat the lacrosse program here for for both men and women. Right, so, right. Yeah, you know, it's been She great. landed in a great spot. Yeah, she really the, the did. The combination of athletics and academics has been great for both of them. That's that's wonderful. Gosh. Mm -hmm. um, so when you think of admissions, you usually think about the application uh, process. But mm -hmm. really, I guess with your, your job, you're sometimes the first people um, that a prospective student comes in contact with. So tell us a little bit about the role of the admissions office. Really, we're trying to get students to take that next step. So we want them to visit campus, first mm -hmm. of all. So we're encouraging families to visit campus. We know how beautiful the campus is. Uh, we want them to come and visit campus. So that's really what we're trying to do is get them to take that first step. Mm -hmm. Then the next step is to apply for admission. And then the next step is to maybe come to our admitted student day. And then the next step is for them to enroll at SU and become part of the flock. So we're always trying to move them along the steps. I love that part of the flock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Join the flock. Great, great terminology. Yeah. Um, so you share your information with prospective students in many different ways, but one I think popular way is the open house. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about those. The open house is a great way for families to experience the campus. Um, they come to campus, we have three in the fall, two in the spring. Uh, they come to campus, they get a presentation, the, a welcome from the president, uh, which is great. Yeah. Then they hear from two student speakers. They hear from Kevin from the Career Center and Aaron Basco, who's our AVP for Enrollment Management, mm -hmm. on sort of the process, and we talk about financial aid. Then we give them a tour of the campus, and then they come back for an academic um, fair and a student services fair that they what can do you answer mean questions. By a fair? Well, it's kind of set up like a college fair where they okay. have tables that they can go to. Mm -hmm. So any major that they have questions on or minor they have questions on, they can go and talk to somebody. Oh. Honors is there. Um, ROTC is there. We have all the student services are there. So housing, and student financial activities. aid. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. So pretty much any question. So it really is an open house. Like a so job fair almost. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So any question that they have can mm -hmm. get answered at that oh, fair. Oh, that's neat. And you say that you office, offer campus tours as well as sure. a part of the open house. And I'm sure 
otherwise too. You, you offer the, the tours and usually, if it's my, I think my understanding is correct, it's run, the tours are run by students, active students. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yes. Our tours are given by current students. We have about 100 students that um, work for us in the admissions mm -hmm. office and they give tours uh, twice a day every day um, and then they give tours on all of our events. I did that um, when I was in college at Gettysburg oh, College. Oh, did you? It, it, well, it was an easy way to make money yeah, yeah. and it was so much fun and the neat thing was when somebody actually decided to go to Gettysburg, I, I'd see them the next year and right. say, oh yeah, you were the kid I took around who's, yeah. you know. If you're passionate about SU, it's a great way to, you know, share that passion. It really is. Mm -hmm. It really is. And I yeah. think that, that it's helpful to the prospective student to talk to somebody their age. Right. You know, or yeah. close to their age and mm -hmm. with the kind of experiences that they've had. Yeah. Um, now, when we think about applying to school, um, you usually think about fresh, the freshman class or people coming right straight from hi, uh, high school. Sure. But I know you have other demographics that are interested in coming to SU. Can you yes. tell us something about them? Sure. We have about 700 transfer students that, that joined us this fall. Wow. Uh, so that, it's a pretty, a lot. yeah, it's a pretty large um, yeah. percentage of students that come. So they either went to community college and finished an AA degree and then mm -hmm. are coming to SU or they went to another four year school and, and felt that SU was a better fit. So um, we have lots of, of students that come from community colleges and other colleges colleges. Um, we have dual enrolled students, so students that are still in high school that are taking some classes. Mm -hmm. We have some satellite campuses, so we have students that are taking SU programs at uh, other campuses around the state um, and one in Germany. And then we have uh, graduate students um, as well that attend the university. So a bunch of different And maybe even people my age who decide they just want to learn something, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, or That's get an, an MBA or yep yeah yeah I've been yeah. thinking about that oh good well there's yeah. a second bachelor degree program too so students can come back and get a second bachelor degree or you know anybody can just come and sign up for classes I'm not sure classes. my study skills are yeah. what they used to be <laughs> <laughs> um, what other opportunities are there for students and their parents prospective students to come and learn about the campus so we have daily tours every mm -hmm. uh, Monday through Friday that we're open. We do a um, information session followed mm -hmm. by a tour twice a day, every day. So uh, students can go to the website, sign up for that. Um, we have transfer Tuesdays for our transfer students. So if they want to come in uh, and have their um, transcript evaluated, they can do that. So oh. there's an opportunity for them to come in and meet one-on-one -on -one with a counselor and, and talk about their transfer credentials. Uh, then we have, um, when students are accepted, we have an admitted student day program, which is our largest program that we run. Um, we have a scholars day program, um, which is for some of our high achieving students. Uh, so there's lots of opportunities for students to come to campus. And I don't know us. how you have enough hours in your day. Yeah. <laughs> It's a lot. In the that is a lot. Gosh. Now, you mentioned earlier about the Honors College. What is that and how does a student decide if that's something they want to pursue? Honors is really for our high achieving students. Um, it's They are with dedicated faculty who are in a smaller environment. Um, there's some enhanced courses that they take. Um, really, any student that um, is a high achieving student or, or is really motivated to, mm -hmm. to be high achieving um, is welcome to apply to the Honors College. And they can do that through the website. There is an application process that they have to go to, through. Um, so they have to apply for admission and then also mm -hmm. apply for the Honors College. But students You can, can come do that. in as a freshman and go directly into the Honors College. Is that right? Yes. Right? You, you apply for it. Typically, you apply for it um, coming into your freshman year. But there are students that once they get here will decide that they want to be in the Honors College. Oh. And you can do that as well. So you can do it anytime, really? Yes. After any year or in the middle of the year. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Um, now, once someone decides, okay, I've been on all my tours, I've attended all these mm -hmm. fairs, <laughs> this is where I want to go, what's the next step for them? To apply for admission, um, and we have three different ways they can do that. We have mm -hmm. early decision, which is a binding. So if you visit SU and you leave and you say, this is where I'm going, uh, you don't need to apply anywhere else. Mm -hmm. You can just apply to SU and we'll review your file early. Uh, you have to apply by November 15th. We'll tell you by December 15th, and then you have until January 15th to make a deposit to the university. Mm -hmm. So early decision is one way. Early action is um, an opportunity for you to know a little bit earlier, but not have to commit until May 1st. First, um, and you apply by December 1st for that. And then we have regular admission, which is you apply by January 15th um, and you have until, um, we will tell you in March and you have until May 1st to make your decision. Mm -hmm. So the early, early decision mm -hmm. um, is, is a person says, okay, I'm sold. This is what I want to do. Yes. And they will, are, are no, in a whole, in just less than a month, they know 
if they're in or not. Some of them know already. Mm -hmm. We already have 20 students that have told us that they are coming for next fall, so yes. Yep. Gosh, mm -hmm. they'll have an easy senior year. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> you just kind of get yeah, it out Yeah, not of having the worry. <laughs> right. yeah. 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 Yeah, I know several people that applied early this year. It really is a, yeah. a load off. It's, yeah. It's, yeah, it's And great. you get our best consideration because mm -hmm. we know you're very interested in the university, mm -hmm. so um, it's, it's very helpful for mm -hmm. students. Well, this has all been so interesting to me. Mm -hmm. um, I thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. I, I, I just don't know how you get everything done during the course <laughs> of the day with all that yeah. activity going on. We but work a lot. But you must we be enjoy pretty good it. at it because yeah. you've been doing it for quite some time. I, this is my 31st year in admissions. Is so. that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you don't even look old enough for that to be true. <laughs> well, so. thank you, Susan. <laughs> You're very welcome. And again, thanks for being with us today. Thank you for having me. In just a moment, We'll speak with Assistant Director of Freshman Admissions, Charles Overholt. But first, when students enroll at Salisbury University, they are not limited to education here on the Eastern Shore. Each year, hundreds of students earn academic credits while studying around the world through global seminars and Salisbury Abroad programs. Here is a quick look at some of those experiences. So I studied in Malaga, Spain for four months from uh, beginning of January to the end of May and I was there completing my Spanish minor. Hands down the thing I enjoyed most and the biggest lesson I learned was how important it is to step out of your comfort zone. The whole experience really taught me that when you do things that scare you or things that you never expected that you do, that's really where the most growth comes out of and I really feel like the past four months I grew as a person so, so, so much. Well, I studied abroad in Scotland for the spring 2019 semester and I had a really amazing time over there. I was really able to increase my worldview. Just taking courses in a foreign country gives you a whole new perspective on how to perceive, for example, history in my case, but just academics as a whole. It made me aware that the American interpretation of history, for example, is obviously not the only one. And I'm glad I got to experience that from a wide variety of professors of a wide variety of nationalities. So that's an experience that's priceless. So I've studied in Australia, uh, Honduras, Costa Rica, and Bhutan. So definitely as a person, I think studying abroad and just kind of opened up my perspective a lot. Um, it's really changed the way that I think I view the world as well as just things here and compared to like when I first started at university. You meet a lot of people and realize how everybody kind of views things differently and has like a different way of living their lives and things like that. And so it just I think makes you think differently um, about how then you live your life. I would definitely say to make an appointment at the Center for International Education, talk to one of the professors there, anyone there, come talk to one of us and then just tell us what you're wanting to get out of an experience abroad and there's definitely going to be a program for you out there and whether it's through Salisbury or through a program like ISA, there's definitely something out there for everybody. It's not something you're likely to have the opportunity to do, I think, always and so if you're thinking about it here, um, I definitely think you should study abroad if you get the chance. A world-class education with the world as their classroom. What an amazing opportunity. Next, we're joined by Charles Overholt, Assistant Director of Freshman Admissions. Welcome, Charles. Thank you. And very good to meet you. Thank you, you as well. Yes, so let's talk a little bit about you first. You were a student here. Tell me a little bit about your decision to come to SU. Sure, so uh, I'm a local, I'm from Pocomoke City, Maryland, and when I graduated from high school, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I was kind of a late bloomer, academically speaking. Um, so I actually went to Warwick Community College first as a general studies major. Uh -huh. Uh, and I really liked three things, music, history, and literature, and I had some music classes and I had some literature classes, and I realized there was, although I liked elements of those, there were lots of things I wasn't particularly interested in, but I had a history professor at Warwick, uh, Mr. Pavise, who I absolutely idolized, uh, and that was ultimately what, what led me down the path, and I transferred here and, and came here as a history major and in that's 2009. You, you did major yes, in, in uh, Twice, actually. History. I did my undergrad here in history, graduated, came back, did my master's degree here in history as well. Oh, gosh. So now you're an assistant director in the admissions office mm -hmm. as part of a team of six. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And so you are in charge of your group of bringing in the freshmen mm -hmm. to, to the university. Um, what kind of guidance do you offer the people who are applying? Absolutely. So the Fortunately, the other admissions counselors are alums like myself, so we can really provide all of them. All of them. Correct. Oh, isn't all of them that are alums. interesting? Some of them, I'm the oldest of the group, 
Um, I'm the age of the, the, the older ones in the group were just coming here when I was graduating. So uh -huh. we never overlapped during our time at college. So we've all had that SU experience so we can speak to it firsthand. I think that's great. It I have no idea. It's huh. always nice to, to be sold something by someone who owns it already. Who so knows an education it? Yeah. from the school. So um, as far as what advice we give to incoming students, is we're generalists. So generally we can talk about pretty much anything at some level of detail. So mm -hmm. whether it's services offered on campus, you know, how to use the bookstore, because we've all been through it ourselves, right? So we can right. talk to that. Uh, specifically for the college application process, we're there to collect information that students need to make sure that they have their transcripts on files, to reach out to them if they're missing test scores. Mm -hmm. um, sort of that administrative end is what we're counseling on. Uh, sort of, We're the gatekeeper, so mm -hmm. we're uh, providing students access to the institution and then putting them in contact with other faculty or staff here who can answer specific questions that we don't have information for. Now, I know your specific area of concentration is the Lower Eastern Shore. Um, what are people surprised about who live near us but are exploring SU for the first time? Yeah, so I get that a lot. I, I, usually one of my first questions when I go to the local high schools is, how many of you guys have visited SU before? And mm -hmm. almost everyone raises their hand, but invariably when I follow up, I find that and they've just kind of been on campus for a camp or they came here to eat at the commons or they went to Chick-fil-A. They've kind of grown up in the shadow <laughs> of the school, right? Uh -huh. So they think they they know what it's like. Um, but I definitely think there's something human about um, your, your proximity to, you know, an education, a school or a beach or a landmark kind of alters your perception of it. You just take it for granted because it's been there your whole life. So I always encourage students to come visit and I'm always amazed when they, when they especially if I'm with them when they come and they see the academic commons or they see Purdue Hall actually for the first time from the inside, not just driving by on the highway, they're kind of blown away by the resources that we have here. And oftentimes they're like, wow, I had no idea. Um, so we have absolutely first rate facilities here. You just gotta come in off Route 13 to check it out for yourself. So SU is a great local partner, but out of state students, mm -hmm. how do you reach them and get them interested in SU? Yep. So we actually send staff members, send admissions counselors or recruiters all the way from Maine to North Carolina on the East Coast. So mm -hmm. we're still visiting high schools out of state. Uh, we can't go to every out of state high school like we do in Maryland. We effectively go to every high school in Maryland, mm -hmm. sometimes multiple times in the recruitment season. Uh, but we have especially strong presences in New Jersey, uh, in Delaware, Virginia, Pennsylvania, and New York. We're very active there. We go to college fairs in the majority of the high schools in those states. We also have some new scholarship options. We have a scholarship called the Good Neighbor Scholarship which um, is, is certain out of certain states are eligible for this and it helps make up a difference between the in-state and out-of-state mm -hmm. tuition costs at mm -hmm. SU. It doesn't cover the whole amount, but a lot of states, like students from New Jersey, New Jersey has very high in-state tuition costs anyway. So in combination with the Good Neighbor Scholarship, a lot of times New Jersey residents will actually pay less to come to Salisbury University than it does to cost them to go to school in their home state. Oh, so gosh. that makes us a very attractive option. What's the difference in terms of in-state versus out-of-state? It's, out it's somewhere between nine and $10,000 for the in-state and out-of-state difference. So the Good Neighbor That's Scholarship big. makes up a sizable portion of mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, now you're dealing with different demographic in that most of the kids that are coming here, most of the communication is through electronic means. Mm -hmm. Okay, how do you get in touch with these students through electronic means? Yep, so we still use some traditional means. We'll use mailers and things that mm -hmm. we send home. The acceptance letter uh, comes home in a big yellow envelope, the seagull on there that says, welcome to the flock. Uh -huh. So a lot of students love to take pictures of that but then they post those pictures on Instagram, right, on mm -hmm. social media. So we do have a presence uh, online. Um, our communication plan involves a lot of emails. We'll send email reminders and things like that. Mm -hmm. We do have an Instagram page as well for the admissions office. Oh. It's called at flock to SU. And we post pictures of high school visits of students that we're meeting on the road. We also post pictures of events on campus. We really try to make students feel like they're a part of the community, mm -hmm. even though they're still going through the application process. Uh, we'll do giveaways and contests. Right now we have a contest running called SU Cribs, where we're posting pictures of freshman dorm rooms that have been decorated, and then we're asking our followers to vote on the ones that they like the best. And oh, then that's the ones, great. Yeah, it's, it's really fun. So the ones with the most likes will win, and each of it's a, they're all two-person rooms, so they're each getting a $50 gift card to the bookstore at SU for the winner. So it was free to enter, so that's really generated a lot of buzz, a lot of interest. The application process is all totally online as well. We actually use two types of applications. You only have to do one. Um, we use Common Application, which has over 800 
registered members. Common Application is a, a nationwide third-party network where students can write basically one application and they can take that application and oh. send that to other Common App that member makes schools. Sense. Yeah. Saves a lot of time. And we also use CollegeNet, also online, but CollegeNet just comes directly to Salisbury University. That doesn't get sent to other schools. Mm -hmm. So how does a person decide which one they're going to use? Um, if I always advise students, uh, the average student now is applying to four or five, sometimes more colleges. If you know that you're interested in a bunch of different schools, go with Common App. It's a little bit longer to fill out. Common App sort of, the more questions you answer, the more questions it asks. So I'm the staff member uh -huh. responsible for testing Common App over the summer. So I filled it out myself dozens of times. Um, and I know that if you tell it your parents went to college, it's going to ask you where did they go. And if you tell it where they went, it's going to mm -hmm. ask you what did they study. So it kind of goes on at, at length. So if a student is applying to multiple schools, Common App is still faster. If they're just applying to SU, if they're coming in as early decision or something mm -hmm. like that, the CollegeNet application is a little bit shorter to do. And if you go on to the SU website, is that application available? Both applications it available is. right they, there? They are. If you go onto our website, okay. salisbury.edu, the website was just mm -hmm. redone. Uh, right at the top, there's a link that says become a student. And if you click on that or hover over it, it'll give you options. So apply freshman, apply transfer, visit campus, okay. et cetera, and you can fill it out all right online. So that's how you do it. No yep. more written essays. No more, uh, no more written essays. There is still a, a typed essay that's required. We uh -huh. do read those, but we don't have any more paper applications. It's all done on the game. So what do you think? from your experience, is the one thing about SU that students are drawn to the most? Mm -hmm. uh, our size and our feel, and those kind of go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. So we always will have visitors that come down and they, they, they're just blown away by how personal that we are. Um, they can walk in, they can meet with an admissions counselor immediately. They don't have to set up an appointment, you know, two months in advance to mm -hmm. get a hold of somebody. If they call the office, we'll get their question answered usually while they're on, their, on the phone with us or we'll call them back with an answer. So we're very accessible um, mm -hmm. for visitors, which is something that relates to the size of campus. You know, not almost 9,000 students here. Uh, we have very good, very tight student-teacher ratio, 15 to 1. So there's just quite literally more faculty there to assist students. Mm -hmm. um, our faculty have open office hours where students can just walk in and get their questions answered. Again, you don't have to set up an appointment weeks in mm -hmm. advance. Um, all of our faculty are faculty, in fact, so we don't have TAs or graduate students teaching classes, so it's a very professional touch on education. Small classroom size, it feels a lot like the high school classroom. We don't have any mm -hmm. classes here with three or 400 students in them. It's usually, you know, 24 students is our average class size, so a lot of students are more receptive to that. You know, being able to raise your hand in class and ask a right. question and get it answered rather than waiting for a tutor session with a TA, you know, in your lab hours right. for that week. So that's a very, very good selling point. The location also helps us close to the beach. Uh, we have a lot of students that come here with their families over the summer to vacation. Mm -hmm. um, we're sort of in this Goldilocks zone, I would say, where we're like just south enough, but not too south for students that are coming from New Jersey or New York. Um, but we are a very attractive option in coastal Maryland. It's a pretty nice place to be. It's a nice place to live and it's a great place it to is. study. It is. So very good. Well, thank you so much yeah, for all that information. It's, it's terrific to meet you and, and to hear what you do. And great to meet you. Thank you. Good to talk to you. And now let's take a look at what's happening on the campus in November. Bye.
There are so many wonderful cultural and educational events coming up. I hope to see you at some of them. I'd like to thank my guests today, Beth Skoglund, Director of Admissions, and Charles Overholt, Assistant Director of Freshman Admissions. I'm Susan Purnell, and this has been Salisbury University on the Air. Thank you for watching. Thank <laughs> you.